Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a project and this one is another one of the uh, PCBWay sponsored projects. I've got the boards from them. I'll be sharing the Gerbers at the end. And um, this one is actually something I needed for some time. I've been looking for a probe, a uh, detector probe, so RF probe for some time, especially working on, um, for example, the Grindix satellite back there. And it would have come in really useful if I had it already, which I didn't. And recently I was looking at um, some videos on the net, looking specifically for this kind of project. And I found one by someone that I've been following for some time. And I believe he's a subscriber of my channel as well. And that is Chris. The channel is all the gear, no idea. Fantastic channel. It really is entertaining, really is uh, educational. You learn a hell of a lot from there. And I found that he did something that I had been thinking about, but hadn't got started on. And that was to actually create a high impedance probe to do AF and RF detection. Now, the importance of that high impedance part, he explains very, very well on the video that I'm talking about. And I'll link that above and I'll put it in the description below as well. You should go see that because he goes in a lot of detail into the reasons why the impedance of test equipment is so important when you're working with this sort of thing and any kind of equipment really. So the idea that Chris had was to actually create a probe that had a very high impedance buffer at the front. And he uses a JFET for that. And we, if you know anything about JFETs, you'll know that they are voltage driven devices. So they consume very little current. Therefore, they present a very, very high input impedance to, uh, to a circuit. So I went and um, got a hold of him. I decided I didn't want to copy without his permission. <laughs> it's not a good thing to do. So I contacted him and asked if he would mind me doing a project with PCBWay which I um, have done quite a few of, and do the boards and try out the uh, the build and see how we got along. He graciously uh, gave me permission to do so. So this is what this project's about. I've got the boards. I've got the, um, the job done. I'll describe the schematic. And most of the schematic is, well, all the schematic is not original. Uh, part of it is the probe that he did, and part of it is what he was feeding the signal from the probe to. He was using a Velman signal tracer kit, which uh, expects an audio input or a, an input and um, amplifies it. So it's a, a little audio amplifier. I decided to do the whole thing in one. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you the project for a high impedance probe with the amplifier module with a speaker. So we have an all in one uh, unit to um, make life a lot easier when trying to repair audio and RF equipment. So if this is the sort of thing that interests you, and if you haven't fallen asleep with my uh, rather lengthy introduction, stick around. It might be fun. So here we go. I've got another one of these boxes, and I love getting these boxes. It means I've got another interesting project to do. And here are the boards. I've opened it up already. This is the result. Isn't she a beauty? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting carried away. I just, I'm always fascinated by how these things come out because I could never do this at home. So this board has got uh, various boards on it. As you can probably tell, there are these breaks in the middle. And the reason for that is going to become obvious when I describe the schematic. The way I've done this is I've made these breaks, these little break holes on here. This is actually three boards. So that's all you do. You go one, two, three, four. Okay. And then all you need to do is you need to just file these ends off here just to make sure that it comes out neat. You don't have to, but I like to do that. And this is great. I love it. I love it. I'm always fascinated by this. You probably noticed. Okay, time to do the build. Now, before I do that, I'm going to describe to you exactly what this is, what the schematic entails, how I decided to do the board layout and the board um, design. So let's have a look at that and then we'll get on to the build section. And here's the full schematic. 
nothing too special here, nothing too original here. This section over here is the audio amplifier. In the case of Chris's project, he was using a Velman signal tracer kit, which he built, which had exactly this inside it. It's an LM386 audio amplifier. It is configured for about 40 dBs of gain. It has about a 50K input impedance, which is basically made up of this spot over here, plus 100 ohms at the bottom. The 100 ohms at the bottom means that you can never get the volume down to zero. If you can imagine the wiper down at the, at the bottom, in other words, minimum volume, you've still got 100 ohms over there. So you've got 100 over 47.100 of the signal. So you will get some audio coming through. I presume this is so you don't forget it on. <laughs> That's the only explanation I can find. There's obviously another one. And it's uh, coupled through this capacitor to do any DC blocking, which we will uh, possibly have or could have. In the case of the self-standing uh, signal tracer, you probably would have it. You would be tracing parts of the circuit looking for audio. It could be anywhere in the circuit with DC at this point over here. So you block that and you then amplify whatever sound you get through. Again, this is a single supply. They're using a, well, I'm using a nine volt battery. I've got a small filter capacitor there. Well, a filter capacitor there. So it's a nine volt supply. That 5.5, the output will probably be at around half that voltage. So you need this capacitor to connect it, to couple it to the speaker. Right, that's done. Now, why have we got two of these here? This is me being me. The circuit that Chris uh, designed is basically this one here. He's got a uh, pad. The pad here is a probe and it goes through a 100 picofarad capacitor, very small cap, but because this is a very high resistor here and a very high input impedance into the into the gate of the FET. This capacitor can be small and he's got this in um, basically a FET amplifier. You've got the uh, source resistor here with a, a source bypass cap. This just uh, gives you more gain and it has a 4.7k uh, drain resistor. The gain, the overall gain of this stage is configurable by the amount of uh, resistance you have over here versus the one you have over there. But the way he's got it gives me about a five times or six times gain, which is more than enough. That is then coupled through this capacitor to this section, this section being the detector. It's two germanium diodes, one N34As in my case, and it detects the envelope of whatever comes out of here. Now, if whatever comes out of here is already audio, that's fine. It'll go straight through, it'll be clipped, and if it's, uh, for example, an IF uh, signal, let's say 460 kilohertz with a modulated tone on it, that'll get demodulated, rectified. And of course, the tone comes out of this end. That's the whole point of a detector. The difference is that in this case, instead of just having the detector stage, you've also got a high impedance buffer stage. That's the all important difference in this particular design. Over here, we've just got uh, some filtering because the supply comes through a, an umbilical cord that connects to this point over here. This point over here will supply the ground reference and the nine volts that goes to here and to there. And this point over here passes back the audio out from this end into the audio in at that end. So we've got a three wire connector here. The way I'm gonna do it is with a jack plug and socket makes it easier to just remove the probe. He's got this then just being slightly filtered over here. There's a dummy diode here in case there's a reverse polarity. When you're using a, a socket, a, a jack socket, you could end up with some strange situations when you plug the socket into, or the plug into the socket, and you've got nine volts sitting on one of the, one of the points there. That just helps you prevent any kind of uh, mishap that would burn out the stage. He's also got the, uh, the LED over here. I'm using a high brightness LED, so 10K is more than enough. It's very bright, and if you use 2.2, it'll work just as well, but it's really quite uh, bright on these LEDs that I'm using. So that's basically it. And this, as I said, is me being me. This is exactly the same as the uh, top version, except I've made it with SMD components. Now, here's the problem. This um, JFET, this is the uh, 310. This is equivalent to the J310 not the 2N5457. You do get them in SMD format. I can't find them. If I find them, I find them. If I don't, I can always experiment with a different JFET with different bias resistors over here, the um, source resistor and the drain resistor. I can experiment and see what I get over here. This particular JFET actually has a very high uh, drain current. 
So you might not want that using a battery, but you know, this is just for future, future proofing the project. The same story up here. You can get the SMD components for all that. And then here's the other crux of the problem. I don't think they make germanium diodes in SMD format. I don't think, I'm not sure. If you know any different, let me know in the comments. I've just used a Schottky diode here. The forward voltage drop on the shot on this particular Schottky is pretty similar to the one on the top, the uh, 1N34As. I'm not sure it'll work. Anyway, as I said, future proofing. You can always take a 1N34A and bend it and solder into the contact points for this particular diode. The rest again, same story. There's your V plus, there's your out, there's your ground. That is the full description of the schematic. Nothing too dramatic over here. Now here on the board, I went to town. I took advantage of the fact that you can build a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter PCB with PCB way for the same price. So this, uh, these dimensions, none of them exceeds 10 centimeters. I think this is about eight. And I decided to put both of these probes on here. This is the through hole version. This is the SMD version. These uh, have a, a gap in the middle here with these little holes that you can just crack off. You just break the board. Then you've got one amplifier section over here. And I put another one on here because that's what makes the board, you know, rectangular. And you can never have enough amplifier boards. So this is just to take advantage of the uh, real estate that the board design allows me to use. What I've done here also is I've made the, uh, I've put the pot on the reverse side. And uh, when I build it, I'll show you, it's got uh, the kind of, it's the kind of pot which you can fit into the, into the holes here and you can use it to um, bolt the entire board and the pot to a enclosure, to a faceplate or something like that. I like using those. I used a lot of those when I build um, guitar effects pedals and things like that. They just make life a lot easier. And if you disregard the 3D attempts here, these are, these come standard. I don't use them. <laughs> As you can see, they can come out all sorts of wonky, but um, this is what the board looks like. And um, this is what I wanted. This is what I hope to get, and this is what I got. So time to go back to the build and uh, see if uh, I've made any stupid mistakes or not. Now for this build, I'm not gonna use the SMD version, and I'm not gonna use the second amplifier. I'm only gonna build a probe with the three-hole components, and then the amplifier section, the LM386 amplifier board. The probe is gonna be on a probe module or a tube, I still have a problem as to how I'm going to get that done, but I've got to think of something. And the amplifier module is going to be, well, in some sort of enclosure with a speaker. Now, I don't think you'll get anything from watching me sold all these. Uh, suffice to say that um, I've made all the component holes, all the holes bigger than the standard default sizes and the pads, because I always have a little bit of a problem soldering to some of them. So I personalize this when I do the board design and it looks like they're all exactly the way I wanted them. Since I don't want to bore you with watching me solder, here's the result. We've got our speaker. This is a small speaker that I just found lying around. I'm going to use it for testing. I've got a different plan for the final product and I'll tell you about that a bit later. But here's the board the battery clip and the jack, the jack that has the signal, the ground and the nine volt supply going to it. This is gonna be in the enclosure that uh, serves as a base, okay? Now, what I, what I meant by um, putting the pot on the side, this is what I meant. You use one of these 90 degree pots. These are alpha pots that are very, very common with, uh, with guitar effect pedals. And you can actually just fit them on the board, have the components on the other side. And then when you make a hole on the enclosure, you put this through, you tighten that, and your board is actually fixed to one side of the enclosure or the case, whatever you're gonna use. But this is the board itself. This is the um, component side itself. There's nothing to it. Everything came out nicely. I put the uh, chip in a socket, just in case. I've used these capacitors uh, on the audio path Okay, these are foam caps, and I've used a ceramic down there for uh, DC supply filtering. These are as close as possible, that one there is as close as possible to the supply pins of the chip. And that's it. 
that's it. I could have put uh, spaces. I could have put connectors on here, but I'm. I wanted this soldered in place, and that is our amp board. Now, what about the probe? Let's have a look at that one. Well, the probe starts off with the 6.3 millimeter jack plug. It's a stereo because you need a signal. Uh, 9 volts and, well, 9 volts signal and ground. Bit of heat shrink here just to protect it. And if we follow this through, this is about 60 centimeters. Here is our probe. It's still in, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's still in test mode. I'll tell you why. I've got this ground here. This is just to connect to the shield of whatever enclosure I'm going to put around here. I've got an idea for that. I've got an LED here, which I might not, might not use because it might be more useful to have this LED on the base where the amp uh, board is. But as you can see, it all came out fairly well. Now you'll notice these two capacitors are actually on the underside and they're bent over. This is because I want to put this into a metal tube and sticking out the top, they would just take up too much space. If I wanted to make those small, I could actually make them... Uh, Tantalum SMD caps, I can fit those on there. But this keeps everything pretty uh, standard. I wasn't sure about the FET. The one thing about FETs is that they are notoriously all over the place in terms of specs. You can get a whole batch of the same FET and they will react differently. They'll have different um, pinch-off voltages, they'll have different IDSSs. So I put a little socket on here so that I could test various FETs. And as it happened, it worked with the first one. What I'll do before I put this in the enclosure is just desolder the socket, put the FET in there permanently. This is the 2N5457, the same as Chris's one. This cap here, this 100 picofarad capacitor here, is a high voltage type. This is a 1000 volt cap. I don't know if that will protect or save the FET if I have a, a really high voltage spike, but we shall see. Maybe I should just leave the, the socket there and change them out if they burn out but we shall see. And then I've got a little bit of uh, coax. The shield is connected to ground and the end has got little tip soldered on there. This again, just for testing. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to use this. I do need uh, the ground to connect to the device under test. It's a good idea. You, you can actually get a uh, pretty good uh, signal if you just approach this to some high level signals, but if you ground it, a lot of the noise just goes away. I want to test this thing without a shield on there. I don't know how much noise we'll hear, but um, I want to see what it sounds like. I'll leave the lead in here for now because it'll tell us that the supply is on. But yeah, this is it. This is it. It actually came out very well. Chris, I liked your build, but I'm happy with this one. <laughs> I'll get you aboard. Anyway, time for testing. Let's see what we've got here. No time like the present. Let's power it on. There's no power switch on here because I'm going to put that directly in the enclosure. I heard something. Oui. Okay, we've got something. This is the audio in over here, the white wire. Okay, so we're getting noise. Volume's on max. I should be getting 9 volts over there. Let's see. This is ground. That should be 9 volts. And, yep, it is. It's getting through. So, let me connect the probe. Now, the reason I said you've got to be careful with um, how you wire this up, in other words, how you wire this up, is because you've got 9 volts over here. And I've made the 9 volt tip so that it's the last thing that goes in. So you can imagine there's no power on here. When it goes in, it's going to hit the ground first, the, the audio input, but there's no problem there. But it only hits the 9 volts right at the end. So let's try that. Ha! Ah, yes. Beauty. The lead is on. And <laughs> it's working. I don't know why it shouldn't be. It's picking up all the noise. It's 
just the display driver in there. So it's making all the right noises. Question is, is this going to detect anything? Fortunately, I've got the radio here that I want to try, but I want to show you what I'm going to do as for enclosure. I've got a PVC pipe over here. This is not going to be the final enclosure. I'm still trying to find a perfect one for this. This is a little bit too big. I'm thinking like cigar tube or something, but I'll get something like that. And I'm going to fit this in there. At the moment, I've got this thing wrapped with um, aluminum, aluminium foil, so it creates a shield. And what I want to make sure of is that, you see all the noise? I want to see if that makes it disappear. Let's hope I don't short anything. Let me bend this guy down. Okay. Got the tip coming out the end there. Now all I've got to do is... Huh. It works. I need to just tape that to the aluminium foil and ground it, and then I've got to take the, um, the ground as a uh, ground wire to whatever I'm testing, because otherwise it just makes a racket. Let me sort that out. Now, I've got this uh, Grundig satellite that I'm working on here, and I've got it on medium wave. You can hear that, it's tuned to a station, but I'm putting the volume on zero. And what I want to do is just use this guy and I want to probe the um, the IF section, the entire IF section. Now, what I'm going to do is clip the ground lead to the chassis, and we'll see what we get. Volume's on max. The speaker is very weak. I am just touching that point there, which is that um, place where I lightly coupled when I did all the IF alignments, it's not actually touching. Brilliant, it's working. Now let's go back a step or two. Let's go to those transistors. That's that one. You need to be ready with the volume control. Okay, go back one step to that transistor. That's the base. Yeah. Let's go to that one. So it's picking up the eye of uh, frequency, which is 400 and what is it, 460 kilohertz? And it is decoding or detecting. It's very loud. Now, if I take the ground away and do the same thing, a lot more buzz. See that? This is working brilliantly. Ah, thanks, Chris. How does this work on audio? Let's have a look. Let's go to the audio amplifier section over here. Now, everything we were detecting there was um, RF. This is now picking up, or going to pick up AF, I hope. This, these are the output transistors over here. Of course, there's no volume. Let me put this on, dummy. Hell, I'm just getting close to there and I can hear it. Listen to this. This is brilliant. That's fantastic. So 
have a look at the volume pot down here. Makes sense, you'd expect to see um, audio on the tone controls. So this thing is working fantastically. I'm really pleased with this. It looks ugly. I need to get the tube done. But I've got a plan for that, and I've got a plan for how to house this as well. Let me show you. I had this all worked out to fit into one of these enclosures. This is where the board would go, and you would just screw the top on, it would hold it in place. The um, audio jack went there, the a power switch went here, the battery would then go to the power switch, it would drive a LED as well, and power the whole thing. But this speaker, which I had actually found fit in here, doesn't leave enough space for me to put the battery along here. You see the battery, I want it to be inside the enclosure. Don't want to touch those two together, but it's got to be in there. And this becomes a challenge. So the alternative was to find a smaller speaker, a speaker that would fit nicely in there. I will then just make a few holes on here and we'd be good to go, right? Wrong. I had a different idea. Now, this is the speaker that I use as a load for my radios. It's about six ohms. And I've actually gone one step further. I've got a load and a dummy switch here. So what I've done is inside this, I've added a, uh, an eight ohm or six ohm resistor and I can switch between speaker and dummy load. And uh, the reason is, stay, stay, stay. I'm not ready to show you yet. I've got these in here that I can plug in the um, speaker connectors to. So I can use this as a lighter dummy load than the one I've got on the bench there, because that goes to the workshop speakers. This thing makes it a lot simpler. I used to have it just as a speaker. Now I can do it with it, use it as a dummy load. And I decided that because this thing's on my bench all the time anyway, why not put this in there? So instead of a smaller speaker, I'll have a bigger speaker. And I'll show you what's inside here. There's a real nice hefty speaker here. These were surround speakers for a um, uh, video, audio video system. <laughs> which never really worked very well. It was really poor quality, but the speakers are pretty good. So I've taken this out. And if you look in here, you can see that I've wired in a low power. It's about two watt, two watt dummy load resistor in there. And then this goes to the speaker. But what I can do is I can fit this guy in here somewhere, probably at the bottom or at the top. And I can then just put a switch in here. The battery can go in the bottom. I've checked. It'll fit down there and the speaker can still go in there quite well. And then I could simply have a switch here that would switch between probe and speaker. So if I want to use it as a probe, that switch will switch on the power to this, uh, to the, this board. Okay. There'd be a jack here so that I can connect the probe to it. And then I can actually switch between uh, probe or dummy load and speaker and use the same speaker, the same cabinet, the same unit on my bench. And that's one less thing to worry about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that and then I will show you. Let's see how this comes out. I've got to make some holes in this thing and I don't care. I've got four or five more of these. So if I mess one up, I'm not going to cry. And finally, here she is. <laughs> All done. It's a tight fit because the speaker has to go in here, but I've got it done. The battery's at the back there. I'll have to remove the front every time I want to change the battery, but I'm hoping I'm hoping it won't be too frequently. I've got the um, jack socket in here. I've got the unit over there. It's actually using the pot to connect to the front. I've got a switch up there that actually is a double pole, double throw, and uh, one pole uh, does the power, switches the battery in to supply the, the unit, and the other pole selects the speaker, either from the result of this um, of this selection here or from, from our unit. So it looks like everything's in place. Let me show you the side. I've got the um, jack socket over here, 
And there's the volume control, min and max. We don't need much more than that. At the back here, I've shown you that, I've got the uh, speaker banana uh, sockets. And on top, what have we got on top? Well, here we choose tracer, the lead comes on, or the load. And when you, when you choose load, you either choose speaker or dummy load. This doesn't come with instructions. You've got to remember how you designed it, <laughs> but I think I will. So tracer or load. And uh, that's basically telling the speaker which uh, signal to pass through. And then once you choose load, you tell the, the switch selects between the resistor inside or the, um, or the speaker itself. So yeah, okay. In fact, I think if you've got it on load, you can use trace at the same time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna be doing that. So it looks like everything is uh, set. And now all I need to do is I need to oh, put the speaker in, which I hope will fit as it did before. And we can do a final test on this thing. Just one uh, note, the battery is being held in place by the, uh, the battery's been held in place by these wires over here. It's pretty snug. And the battery clip at the top is one of those that um, covers the full, the full top. So there won't be any shorts. If the battery starts giving me problems, if it becomes, uh, if it drains too quickly or something like that, I can always just put a, a DC jack at the back here or actually bring the connections out to the back, to here, through here, and have the speaker here with some Velcro, the uh, battery here with um, with some Velcro or something like that, so I can easily change it. Right, let me put this together and we can do a final test, see if this thing was worthwhile. Okay, here goes. We take our um, probe, stick it into the jack, switch on the tracer, and we've got noise. Now, let's see, this is the ground clip, which, um, as I said, not yet finalized. And let's uh, try the radio again. You can actually hear it just by approaching the audio circuit. This is the power transistor section. Volume, volume control. This is perfect. All right, as an audio probe, it works perfectly. Let's go and try the um, the IF again. Now, as I said, this thing has to be used liberally with the volume control. So you really put it on low and then you go up as high as you need. Uh, this wire here is that little wire that I used uh, to capacitively couple when I did the alignment. This thing is insulated, it's not actually touching. In fact, I don't have to touch it, just approach it, and it already uh, detects. So let's go a bit further. Go to the proceeding stage. Brilliant. Okay. This is where it comes in. Let's see if we get anything there. I can just hear it. It's very dim, very faint. But I can pick it up. Mm -hmm. 
miembros del Ejecutivo, como Pedro Sánchez, Nadia Montaño o los exministros. Ok. This thing is working very, very well. So what still needs doing? Well, as I said, the actual probe holder, this thing is not going to do. So it's time to get a cigar. And um, I would probably, probably, I'd probably make this cable a bit thinner. I used a pretty good quality microphone cable because it's got uh, two wires inside. I needed the shield and two wires. I might actually change it when I do the the actual probe uh, holder itself. I might make that a bit thinner. I would, what would I do differently here? Possibly already include the uh, resistor for the um, for the lead on the board itself. Um, and not much else. I don't think I would do much else. I would perhaps have considered, should have considered, using a different chip. There are other chips that um, are actually better suited for this sort of amplifier. And uh, they don't need a capacitor to couple to the speaker. I bought a few of those chips actually, and um, here they are. They are the what? Are, what is this? It's the LM4861. I think you get the 71 and the 91, if I'm not mistaken. They are. This is 1.1 watt. I think the others go up to 3 watt. These are more modern chips. The LM386 is getting a bit long in the tooth, but it still works. So perhaps I would uh, go that way. And the reason I ordered these is actually I was looking at Mr. Carlson's uh, Super Probe, and I believe he uses one of this family. I think he uses the LM4871, a 3 watt one. For this particular speaker, that would probably be a better bet because it would um, it would give more volume. Not that I think I need it. But anyway, that's probably one of the things I would change. Other than that, I don't think I would make do anything differently. I don't think I would. So this is basically it. This is the end. I have a new tool on my workbench. And uh, once I remove this, I don't have anything new. This is a speaker. This is a dummy load. And this is my tracer. Hopefully I won't forget it on so that the battery doesn't drain. It's getting heavier. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I thought I was finished, but actually I'm not. Look at this. This morning I went to a um, hardware store and I found an extension uh, rod for, um, what is it, a Swiffer, whatever they call it, you know, those things you clean dust with. And this uh, tube, metal tube, worked out exactly the right diameter for my board. So I bought the tube, I cut a piece off, and then I started thinking about how to put this in here. And the way I did this was I had an old... Um, probe from a uh, multimeter. I cut off part of it sort of to there and this was still too big to go in here so I ended up thickening it a bit with uh, heat shrink and then using a grommet which sort of fits snugly in there. It's really tight. It's really tight and um, I've got a wire coming out here which is the ground. Okay so this thing is perfectly tight and then at the back well I just put a bit of hot glue I was thinking about how to fill it in. This thing works very, very well. Bit of hot glue and I've got my probe done. And it is metal. I've got a, um, what I did here at the end is I tinned a little bit of the, of the inside of the case. So at the back of the board, I've got a little wire coming out with ground and I solder it when I put this in. So this thing is perfectly shielded. I've tested it, it works perfectly well. So now we're finished, okay? Now we're finished. This is definite now. Now I'm going to say goodbye. I want to thank you all for your attention. I want to thank Chris. Chris, all the gear, no idea. If you haven't seen his channel, you've got to go and see it. Great guy, great projects, really entertaining. And uh, he's the guy who inspired this project. So Chris, thank you very much. Thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring the video and uh, the boards. And I'll be sharing the Gerbers for this project on the PCB Way website. So you can go there look for it and then just um, order your own. I really am pleased with this result. I don't even think I'm going to build the uh, SMD version because this thing works so well. And I was worried about how to fit this in here. You know, a lot of you have got old uh, Heathkit probes. I don't have one of those. This thing worked out beautifully. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you're welcome to do so on Patreon. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.